All right, let's talk about now vitamin K dependent coagulations. Vitamin K dependent. Okay. So uh, looking at this picture, we have we have vitamin K, which is an inactive form. This gets converted to active vitamin K by the enzyme known as epoxide reductase. And that active vitamin K will activate the will activate the inactive forms of factor two, seven, nine, ten and protein CNS. So they were inactive. They needed vitamin K. And the enzyme is vitamin K dependent, which is gamma glutamyl carboxylase vitamin K dependent. If you don't have vitamin K, this enzyme is not going to work. So you need, you need vitamin K. And that will activate, um, and make them more mature, carboxylated <coughs> protein CNS and carboxylated factor 2, 7. 9 and 10, which are the clotting factors. Those all clotting factors, they are going to eventually go into the, the coagulation cascade and form fibrin. And that anticoagulant, which is a protein CNS, that can inhibit factor 8A Okay, that is protein C, that can be factor 8A, but it does require protein S, so C and S both require both, and it can be the factor 8, 8A. Now, in, uh, now the pathology is, if uh, we are giving somebody warfarin, or they have the liver fluke, that warfarin is going to inhibit your epoxide reductase. That means you would not be able to form vitamin K, active vitamin K. That means you would not be able to carboxylate or activate these factors. That means you cannot have the coagulation vectors. That means you cannot have a proper coagulation. Right? That's giving warfarin or liver fluke. Now let's talk about the vitamin K deficiency right there. It is the decrease that this is a factor 2, 7, 9, and 10 protein CNS. Warfarin inhibits vitamin K epoxide reductase. Vitamin K administration can potentially, even if you give, I mean, you're giving warfarin to inhibit this thing. But what if you give vitamin K here? Administration can potentially reverse this, this inhibition, right? Uh, on warfarin, uh, the imagery effect of warfarin on clotting factors, but it is delayed. Why? Because it has to go there, get to the liver, and then activate these things. It's this delayed type of reaction or delayed type of work. It needs time. It is not quick. So that's why warfarin toxicities, the, if you were to give vitamin K in there, it's a delayed uh, type of reaction that you can reverse that. But if you were to give fresh frozen plasma or PCC, uh, plasma, I don't know what this is, but uh, whatever it is, plasma complex, I don't know, fresh frozen plasma or PCC. If anybody of you know, then please tell me. Uh, plasma concentration. I don't know, possibly. But if you were to give fresh frozen plasma, it would reverse the action of warfarin immediately. Why? Because it contains these factors. These things contain already these factors within them, like all these factors, 2, 7, 9, TCS. Because they contain these factors within them, you have an immediate 
uh, immediately can be given with vitamin K in case of uh, severe bleeding. So to to reverse the action of toxicity. So that is, uh, thank you, CC. That is the prothrombin complex concentration. Prothrombin complex concentration. And fresh frozen plasma. They already, these two things, they already contain all these factors. So when you give them, they're going to right away act whenever you need the action. So the, their administra administration is immediate work to reverse the action of warfarin. So, so you, while you're waiting for vitamin K to work, which is a delayed type of work, you also give this thing. So it's immediate, immediately it's working. In case of severe bleeding. <laughs> Neonates lack enteric bacteria. Now, neonates, they do lack enteric bacteria. Why, do, well, why is that important? But that's important because that's how we're getting the vitamin K from. From the gut enteric bacteria, which produces vitamin K. Let's read how. Do they lack the enteric bacteria? When they lack the bacteria, I mean, the enteric bacteria does produce the vitamin K. So that's why you give an early administration of vitamin K to a, a just-born child to overcome neonatal deficiency and coagulopathies. But if you were to suppress the gut flora by broad-spectrum antibiotics, that's why you don't give broad-spectrum antibiotics as well. They can also contribute to deficiency or vitamin K. Now, two important things are factor seven has the shortest half life. Factor two has the longest half life. Half life. <coughs> Excuse me, half life. Seven shortest, two longest. Too long. Two means too long. Seven means short. Okay, now let's talk about the anticoagulations in there, antithrombins. Antithrombins inhibit thrombin. Factor 2a and factor 7a, 9a, 10a, 11a, and 12a. Heparin. It enhances the activity of antithrombin. Look at any thrombin. Anti thrombin it is inhibiting the thrombin. Inhibits thrombin, which is two A. And all of these. So they haven't mentioned here, but they're saying all here that anti thrombin. Let me just change the color so that you can see. <coughs> Antithrombin, it inhibits the thrombin, which is two, which is mentioned here. And also the 7A, 9, 10, 11, 12, all A's. 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. This is your, our own anticoagulant, anticoagulant. If we were to give heparin now, it would enhance the activity of this antithrombin 3. Principal target of antithrombin are thrombin and factor 2, a, uh, factor 10A. They're saying although it inhibits all of them, but ma majorly principal uh, target, principally is targeting 2A and 10A. And heparin is heparin is inducing it more. Factor five leading mutation produces factor five resistant to inhibition by the activated protein C. This is factor five. If you have a mutation here, then it's resist. It becomes resistant to the inhibition by the activated protein C. 
That's the factor five latent mutation. TPA is used clinically as thrombolytic. And what is the TPA going to do? Same thing as we talked about. It's going to convert the plasminogen to plasmin. And plasmin is going to destroy the fibrin. And all you will have is the all you will have is the D-dimers. And that's a TPA. TPA given. Alright, that's all for the physiology. For Hemonk.